The Gulf Injustice Podcast, the official podcast of Detained in Dubai with Rada Stern. Welcome to the Gulf Injustice Podcast. I'm Rada Sterling and this is a special edition where we're sharing the direct testimony from a prisoner, Albert Douglas, a British man who is detained in Dubai at this moment. Now he speaks about some very, very disturbing things that have happened directly to him and to others within the UAE's prison system. And when you listen to this, you have to remember the cases of Lee Bradley Brown, a British national killed in police custody of Latifa and Shamza, the daughters of the ruler of Dubai who have testified to their own torture, and of Arta Legeska, a Polish man who was raped and tortured in the prison system, as well as Matthew Hedges, who has been very vocal about his experience in the notorious prisons. That do you want to tell me uh, when, when I was in LA, um, I was having great difficulty getting my medicine for my heart. And um, there the policy is you, you speak when you're spoken to, so they don't like you asking for things. But I needed my medicine and I was insistent on trying to get it one day. So they beat me. Um, uh, so hard that one of my ears actually was bleeding. Um, after that, I, I never asked for my medicine again. Um, when I came here to, to Dubai from LA, um, I was actually brought to Dubai on three occasions, but the first two occasions they refused to send my medicine along with me. So when I got to Dubai, they refused me and sent me back to LA and that happened actually twice in one day and the following day eventually they released the medicine with myself and I got it to Dubai but since I've been in Dubai which I think is now almost two weeks I still haven't been able to get access to my medicine they just say wait 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 you can hear perhaps in the background uh, a Pakistan gentleman screaming at the door, um, he, he's also asking for something, I, I, I know that man is also sick, but don't know what he's asking for, but they very rarely bring him along, um, so that's the unfortunate situation. And uh, uh, what happened when you were being transported to, the, to, to Dubai, Dad? What happened when you were being transported well, to, back and forward? They, they, they got me out at about 10.30 in the morning. Then they strip search you as you're leaving, take everything off you. Um, they kept me waiting in the yard from 10.30 till 2.30. Then they drove me to Dubai, but without my medicine. When I got to Dubai, which was two hours later, they refused my entry because I didn't have the medicine. The policeman, uh, the army soldier actually, who was driving the, the van, I was in the back of the van with no AC. I, I know it's not high temperature, but they only let you take what you can wear. And I had three layers of clothes on. I was sweating and feeling rather ill. I also got very angry because I told him that I needed the medicine. And that's also why they didn't allow me in. They drove me back to the bar, to Alain. There I waited um, until... Um, now I got back about 6.30 and I waited till I think, oh, I can't remember, about 12 at night in the yard without any water. I had to get the water out of the tap outside the toilet. But I was just so thirsty, I had to do it. Put me back in the same van, took me back to Dubai again. And again, refused entry because didn't have my medicine. And again, I, I, I was just lost for words and told the, the soldier this and he got very angry. Took me back to our lane again, strip searched me, put me back in the cell. This, oh, before putting me back in the cell, they let, left me again in the same yard. I think this is now about, oh, I'm losing track of the time, but early hours of the morning and about 
4.30 in the morning, they eventually let me go back to my cell. Um, but of course I had nothing now because they threw all my personal belongings away because they thought I'm not coming back and you're not allowed to take him away so I didn't even have a toothbrush. They woke me up first thing in the morning which was about 9.30 and took me now down to the clinic, gave me the medicine as so though everything was <laughs> hunky-dory. Put me back in the yard where I waited from say 10.30 till 4. Mm -hmm. Put me in the van again, same situation, took me back to Dubai. This time when I got back to Dubai, they welcomed me. You've got the medicine, they said, at last, we can let you in. I mean, in two days I only got a few hours sleep. Plus, I mean, it was just traumatic. It was it was unbelievable situation and so dr dramatic. They either can't speak English or don't want to speak English and you, you're always fearful of asking too many questions because once you've been beaten once, um, you, you, you are just scared. I mean, these are soldiers. They carry, you and know, What happened guns, with the, um, sticks. did you see, like you told me, you saw a lot of torture? <clears throat> uh, yes, it, it's mandatory. If you plead In LA. Uh, guilty, like me, I, 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 I put my, my hands up and they only threaten you to beat you. But if you, you actually say, no, I did not do it, I was with two other people who said they did not do it, they were tied by the feet and they were whipped on their back, never on their face, always on their body, never on the face. Um, if you're black, um, <laughs> if you're a black person, you are beaten no matter what. There are some African pit boys in here, very, very nice people from Nigeria, uh, but I met other ones in Alain as well, um, and they were all beaten. Every black African person I've met has been beaten, guilty or not guilty. It's, it's almost like racism beyond belief. It's like going back to the 1800s. Um, and <laughs> It's almost like it, it, it's accepted. Um, that's the, the strange thing about it. Um, so anybody um, who, who pleads not guilty is beaten. I was with a New Zealand chap who was beaten. Um, his name's Amish. Um, and, 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 and another one, a Lebanese guy, he was beaten. And they were on drug drug related, but they both... Uh, you know, said they didn't do it and, 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 and beaten. Subsequently, you say that they wrote you, you patients out. About they, they, did. They, they hurt their genitals and things like this as well, didn't they? Oh, this was another young boy here. Lovely, mm -hmm. lovely young man. Sorry to prompt and, that. Uh, and he, it. Yeah, he, he was uh, smoking ash. I mean, I don't understand all these drugs, but he said ash or something like this at home. Some, some informant told him took him out and then they, they, they put them in this horrible police station and they put uh, uh, a lighter to his genitals to get him to confess. Um, I, I was in one place, they call it something home affairs in Alain, and I was taken there and I was put in a room which I don't know the size of, but let's say it's, you know, 50 by 50. Um, you sleep on a, a ceramic tiled floor without any blanket until you can scavenge one yourself. There's no windows, light is on 24-7, um, there's no exercise, you are not allowed out of that room. Uh, there's one toilet which doubles up to, to wipe your bottom in, in a bucket if you want to clean yourself. They use the same bucket to wash the, any clothes, they use the same bucket to fill it and use as a shower as well. There was 24 men in that little room, and one man had been there for a year. Another one I met, six months, and the man that I had left with, also a man that was beaten, a um, Pakistan gentleman, um, he'd been there three months, in the room, never let out. I mean, it's just, it, if you didn't experience or see it, you wouldn't believe it. And I must confess, if you told me about what I had seen and encountered,
encountered recently, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't. I'd, I'd say you're exaggerating, you're making it up. You have to see it to believe it. It's just like something out of a film like Lawrence of Arabia a hundred years ago. It, it, it's just that there are no human rights at all. They don't exist um, in these places. Yeah. They just don't exist. And the riots? And, a porch, yeah. hmm? and the riots? Um, yeah, I mean, people get uh, uh, very upset because of the conditions that they're in, and and sometimes they 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 have fights and arguments, often based on on countries that they come from, because they segregate you into countries. If you're from uh, Bangladesh or from that's where I was with the Bangladesh people, who are actually very very nice people, I must confess, and. Uh, the, why, why were you with the Bangladesh people? Uh, because you have one minute of call time remaining. Please finish your call. Let's talk about that. That was there. the only place where I could get uh, a room. Go on, Dad. You were telling me before, before it cut out. Yeah, the, the riots are often between different people in different cells from different countries. And the be many reasons but one one of the reasons that caused the fight was last time was lack of food when they bring the food it's it's all handled by hand so there's no hygiene at all you get pieces of chicken it's counted by hand by what they call the former he then gives it to his pal who gives you it on a plastic top of a plastic box uh, lid and often there isn't enough food. And then the ones that have got food, um, the ones who haven't got food, get angry with the ones that got food. And ultimately they end up having an altercation because there's never enough food uh, to go around. But they always just give you enough food to keep you alive. That's, that's basically all you, you get. Uh, and... Um, that, that, that's, that, that's it, and, and the people's stomachs are hungry, um, and it just somehow or other leads to altercations. Um, I saw uh, one gentleman there who was my roommate, and um, he was from Sudan, um, and he was there because he didn't have insurance on the car, or, or, or some sort of insurance, but he was uh, a disabled uh, gentleman. But he was on the third floor with me, so there's no lift. So every time he he had to go up the stairs, we had to carry him, uh, inmates. And uh, unfortunately, the toilet, as I explained, is, is just a hole in the ground. And when you're disabled, it, we had to help him go to the toilet, which was obviously uh, quite distressing for all parties. But when you're in those situations, you, you you know you do look after your fellow human being. You, something else comes out in you, and things that you would not consider doing normally, you you would do to to help um, because it, you have no rights in those places at all. You you are literally like an animal in a cage in a zoo, and the worst thing you can do is complain. <laughs> you get beaten um, now, that's I, happened to me and sorry I, I spoke to you um, uh, um, <clears throat> I spoke to you when we got the prisoners abroad um, office to give you a call um, ah, and at yes. the time you had uh, confirmed to me um, or you confirmed to them your well-being but could you just explain the reason and why ah, you were suddenly after being there for um, so many weeks and nobody could speak English, I got this soldier come who could speak English better than I could. And he took me down to a room. I didn't know where I was going. Um, I entered this room, which was the, definitely the nicest room in the prison because the prison looked like it had been built in the 1700s. Um, and this was a lovely room. And he sat me down and there's a TV screen and these two very nice ladies come on 
from from the UK, foreign affairs, I believe, and uh, they were asking me, uh, am I being treated well? Am I getting food? And this soldier was um, to the right of me and, and just a few inches uh, away from the screen. And before I got into the room, he, he did say to me, I, I hope you know uh, what to answer when these questions are given to you. And I, I didn't even know who I was going to see or anything. I mean, I just sat in the... I had no idea. And they could not see him, but he was only inches away from me. And there was another uh, intimidating gentleman, uh, maybe three or four feet away by the door. Um, make, make that a little bit bigger. Make, make that five or six feet away from the door. So I felt so in... Uh, intimidated, I couldn't answer the questions uh, that were put to me at all, um, bearing in mind it had only been a few days since I had been physically beaten myself, so um, there was no way I could answer uh, accurately the questions about food, well-being, so, so forth. I mean, uh, I was just in fear. Um, I, I actually just wanted to really get out of that room and turn the TV off for fear of actually saying something that might be detrimental to me once those ladies were off air. Yeah. Um, harrowing situation. Um, had I had I known, I would have refused to actually go to that interview with those two two ladies. Um, uh, I, I just wouldn't have gone, but they, they, they certainly took it very, very seriously um, that those ladies were come. I mean, finding English-speaking soldier was, I didn't know there was one, didn't know there was one. Yeah. So, I mean, I can go on and on and on. I could spend hours and hours and days telling you the stories, uh, the horrific stories of no human rights abuse of uh, prisoners um, that I encountered in, 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 in that jail. Uh, I, I wouldn't wish a visit there for one day to my worst enemy. Um, it, 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 it's, I don't know, it, it's, uh, it, it, it's not a case of it's a prison, accept it, this is not. This is this is just something beyond uh, prison. Um, uh, I think next time I ever do go to a zoo, um, I will see how those animals must really feel, because that's how I was trapped, like an animal in a zoo. And so was everybody else. I wasn't singled out. Um, only, only really because I was, uh, you know, perhaps the only British person there, and and obviously because of of my age. Um, but um, other, other than that, I was treated like everybody else, um, and abused just like everybody else. Um, <clears throat> and there's nothing you can do about it. Nothing. I mean, um, obviously you you. You yourself haven't been tortured. You've only you told me you've only seen the torture. You haven't been tortured. You've been beat, but you haven't been tortured. Uh, I, I was only been beaten because um, I admitted to 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 trying to uh, you know um, uh, leave the fence. So yeah. th there was no argument with me. Um, I was only beaten because I was asking for my medicine for my art. But other people who were uh, protesting that their innocence. Um, uh, they were beaten. Um, I, I think here you are automatically assumed guilty for whatever you're accused of, and you have to uh, prove your innocence. It's not like the UK where you're innocent and till proven guilty. In in this part of the world, um, it, it, it's you are guilty, and you have to prove that you're innocent. Um, uh, the, the system is, is, is completely, completely different. Um, Can I ask, and Dad, everyone is just assumed guilty. Another question, um, Dad. Um, obviously, the scenario in front of us was you got pulled in front of a public prosecutor the other day where they basically tried to force you to say that you'd signed oh. documents that you didn't. Yeah, th th this is the check that you signed. And... 
<laughs> they said, um, if you don't admit it, you'll sit in the jail for months. So I said, well, I can't admit to sign in a cheque that I didn't do. He says, well, then you'll sit here in the police station. I said, but that's, that, I can't go in front of a judge and tell a lie. I said, if he has that, that cheque uh, uh, verified in the laboratory, he'll know it's not my cheque, my, my signature, rather. Um, it's my son's signature. Mm. Um, it's as simple as that. Well, then you'll sit here for months. So uh, I left it at that. I, I, OK, I'll have to sit here for months. Then a few days later, I had the same interview on the TV, which I had in person with a prosecutor, but this is from the main prosecution uh, in, in Dubai, and pretty much the same thing again. Did you sign the cheque? No. Do you know who signed the cheque? Yes, my son. Did you sign the cheque? Over and over and over, the same question. Um, I said no. Um, but I was asked on the first occasion to, to say that I did, to say a lie. Yeah. But I didn't do that, and I explained again that it's not my signature, it's my son's signature, and it's completely different, it's not even close. So they sent it to the laboratory, but I think it, it sent to the laboratory with a threat, you'll sit in the cell for months, because it will take months uh, to get this tested. Um, so it, it's almost like a threat in itself. Um, I, I did ask what one policeman, how long would it take? He says anything from two months to four months just to get the result back. Um, and and that, that's only the beginning of the case. It's not the end of the case. It's, it's just one question. Evans knows what will come after that. Um, so you could sit here for heavens knows how long before the case actually gets to the court to the judge mm -hmm. um well um obviously <clears throat> my uh, my concern now is i'm gonna go to uh, i'm gonna i'm gonna actually play this back to rada um and i you know i appreciate um i appreciate what's happening but is there anything you'd like to ask rada while you're uh, while while you can hear this message because obviously phone calls are difficult. Well, I I, I had seen a few of her uh, videos um, and I, I have to confess I'm just like all those people that never ever believed the the full extent of what she said. But I can assure you, everything she said in those videos that she makes, those podcasts, is true. Uh, completely true, but you you have to experience it to be here to see it because it it's, it seems so far fetched all those stories, but they're all true. I assure you, they're all true, and I wish I had only had the good sense to have contacted her at the beginning, because here the lawyers <laughs> the lawyers are bigger criminals than the criminals in the jails um they just want your money it's 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 a rigged system um they they don't really care whether you win draw or lose they purely want money um the courts they they make their own decision not based on the evidence in front of them but by what's politically correct what suits uh, the moment of the day um it's almost like they change the laws uh, as they go along. Um, it, it, it's like a kangaroo call. It's a kangaroo system. I mean, there's just no... I mean, what was the Elaine court. system like in general, as an example? Sorry? The Elaine system when you were there. How would you describe that? Oh, I, I th well, let me just give you an idea. Um, I got took to... to to the TV, to the prosecutor, I admitted my offence, they take you back out. Um, a few days later, they put a piece of paper through the, 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 the door of the, 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 the main cell. Whoever's there picks it up, 
whatever nationality, African, Bangladesh, Pakistan, they read it, they translate it to you. So anybody, any cellmate can, can get hold of that information. It's in Arabic, so it's actually no good to me anyway. They told me that I had um, a 30-day uh, uh, sentence and, 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 and a 1,000 dirham fine, which if I didn't pay equals another 10 days. So it's 30 days plus a 1,000 dirham fine. I said, I accept it. I'm guilty, I accept it, let me sign. I signed, 30 days, 1,000 euro fine, done. At night, these papers are collected, returned, so done. Two weeks went by, they took me downstairs, didn't know where I was going, back into another room, pushed in the room, sat down on the chair, TV comes on, translator's there, this is the court. Did you try to leave the country? Yes. I admit I didn't know why I was there. I was tried for the same crime that I'd already admitted, I'd already been sentenced. But I, I just didn't believe this could be happening again. It all happened in less than 30 seconds. Yes, guilty. You'll get your verdict today. The screen went off. It was so quick, so fast, the judge was there in his red outfit, the translator was there. I got a second court appearance, but I'd already been in jail for for more than 30 days. I'd been in jail 40 days, 50 days, I can't remember. So I'd already served my sentence, I'd admitted it, served it, and now I'm back in the court again. The court didn't know that they'd already sentenced me and I'd pleaded guilty and I'd served my time. And they said, okay, you'll get your verdict again today. I said, I've already had my verdict. I was just shocked. I just couldn't. Anyway, I never did get the verdict. A week went by, another week went by, and then they just put me in the van, like I told you earlier, to take me to Dubai. Dubai. <laughs> That's the type of system that they got. No system. In the prison, they have a, a funny saying, there's only one rule in Abu Dhabi. There are no rules. Mm. And everyone says that. There is only one rule. There are no rules. They make it up as they go along. Well, um, I mean, look, um, I'll get another call uh, about this to uh, to you. So I'm gonna I'm gonna knock off the record now. Um, but uh, you know, it's it's just uh, obviously everyone here knows about your heart. Everyone knows how how you feel and. Uh, <clears throat> You know, hopefully this 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 recording uh, will go to the right places and uh, get some very small, very small insight to what you're going through for someone that's actually yeah. I mean, uh, the uh, uh, that you, uh, uh, you know, as I say, uh, I appreciate uh, any any assistance, any help that that can be given to, to myself and, and furthermore to, to the other people that are here. I, I am not the only person in this situation by any stretch of the imagination. Um, there are many, many other people in in, in same or worse conditions, um, especially on the, the human rights side um, in, in, in particular. Um, and and my, my you know, my heart goes out to those people I've met and I've seen them and I don't want to waste any more of your valuable time going on about this, but I could be here telling you stories about what I've encountered and seen for hours and hours and hours. It makes me very sad. Now, listening to that extremely disturbing testimony should be enough for the UK government to finally get involved and put an end to human rights abuses occurring within the UAE's prison system. While we have the UAE directly marketing the British citizens to come and visit and invest in Dubai, marketed as a glamorous city and a modern society where you would be expected to have the kind of protections and human rights provisions that are prevalent throughout the West. Now, as we can say, this is clearly not the case and this has to stop. We've had British nationals who have been killed in prison and upon investigation, of those crimes, Dubai thwarted them and wouldn't allow them to further investigate. The British courts refused to extradite 
citizens to the UAE due to the real risk of human rights abuses and torture. If we won't extradite them, but we allow the UAE to encourage citizens to visit the country, then the UK needs to absolutely stand up for their citizens when they are facing legal and judicial consequences in the country. We'll be following this up and have followed it up with the Foreign Affairs Minister, with the various ambassadors and with MPs across the country. This has to stop. Thank you for listening to the Gulf Injustice Podcast. Thank you for listening to the Gulf Injustice Podcast. 